Now, of course, we're, we, we saw powers, we saw polynomial, then the next step is rational functions, okay? And so the end behavior for rational functions is going to be a little bit more complex. Uh, if we have P and Q being rational functions, then um, what we're going to check is what is the degree of the polynomial. Remember that the degree of the polynomial is the highest power possible. So in this case, for example, P of X has power M as a maximum degree and Q has degree N as the maximum degree. So we want to check who's bigger. So P is in the top, Q is in the bottom. So if M is less than N, so if the, the, num if the numerator has a higher, so, sorry, has a smaller degree than the denominator, then we can say that this function F of X is going to go to zero. Okay, just right away because we know that. Um, and y equals zero is going to be a horizontal asymptote of f. Now, if they have even degree, if m is equals n, the situation that's going to happen is that the limit when we're going to plus or minus infinity is just going to go to uh, the ratio of the initial coefficient, so the ratio of a of m over b of n. And, uh, of course, that's going to be the horizontal asymptote for the function. Now, if the degree of the numerator is greater than the denominator, so the top is bigger than the bottom, then very quickly that's going to go either to infinity or to minus infinity, and we don't have an horizontal asymptote. Now, if the difference between... Um, the numerator and the denominator is one. So as an example, um, the, denom the, the numerator is just one more than the denominator, then we're gonna have a slant asymptote. By slant, it means that we have a line that works as an asymptote in the function. And in this case though, because it's still the top is bigger than the bottom, then when we're going to infinity or minus infinity, uh, the limits of the function are going to go either to infinity or minus infinity. Okay? So we don't have a horizontal asymptote, but we have a slant asymptotes. And of course, uh, vertical asymptotes is still going to happen if in the reduced form of P over Q. So when we don't have common factors, vertical asymptotes occur at the series of the denominator. So at the series of Q. So this is like the rules for how to calculate those limits. Uh, but I know it's a lot of things. So let me show you this with some examples. So the first example is uh, going to be using the function uh, 3x plus 2 over x squared minus 1. Notice that this is a polynomial of degree 1 over a polynomial of degree 2. Okay. So using this rule, notice that the denominator has a bigger power than the numerator. And so we can see that it's going to go to zero. And so that's what happens here. We can see that the function is going to zero, both at infinity and minus infinity. But there is a way to actually calculate this uh, by hand. So let me show you what happens in here. So there's a technique uh, that we use when calculating this type of limits, especially uh, rational functions, and is we're always going to divide by the biggest power in the denominator. So notice, uh, what's the biggest power in the denominator? Well, notice that it's x squared in this case. So what we do is we divide by x squared everything, top and bottom, so there's no change. And that's going to show us really quick uh, where it goes. So in case you don't want to remember the rules of who has uh, biggest numerator or denominator degree, so what we do is this. We divide by the biggest power on the denominator, and uh, then we simplify. So this is going to produce 3 over x, 2 over x squared on in the bottom 1 minus 1 over x squared. And so notice that by the rule uh, that we established at the beginning of this session, um, and, and let me put here plus or minus infinity because it actually doesn't matter. 
and any of the two can work. Uh, this limit, limit when x goes to infinity of a constant over x, this is always zero because it's a constant quantity over something that is going to infinity. So you're dividing this fixed uh, fixed amount uh, many, many times and it's, and it's very quickly going to go to nothing. It's like dividing a cake between a growing amount of people. Eventually nobody's gonna eat anything at all. So to finish this up, notice that this limit, um, well, can be represented as just all these quantities going to zero. This goes to zero plus this goes to zero as well. This is one and this goes to zero. So in the end it's gonna be zero over one and it's just going to be zero. Okay, and so I can apply this technique um, to anything, to any uh, any type of function. So let's do another example. Now let's use here this function where uh, we have the same numerator and the same denominator. So for that, if we're going to do a limit when x goes to plus or minus infinity, um, notice that uh, we can use the same technique limit when x goes to plus or minus infinity, um, then we're gonna divide by x to the four. So I'm gonna jump directly to that step. You can see that I'm dividing right away for uh, x to the four. And so immediately, on the next uh, scenario, you see why is the ratio between the two initial coefficients. You can see that this term is not going to survive. So we're going to have 40 plus uh, 4 over x squared. You can see this goes to zero, this goes to zero, this goes to zero, this goes to zero, and hence uh, the limit is just the quotient between the two um, initial coefficients. And uh, so let's take a look at how the function behaves. Notice uh, this is the function that we're checking. And when we're going to infinity and minus infinity, in both cases, we're going to go, we're going to go to four. Okay. Now let's take a look to another example. Uh, so we already saw the denominator being bigger. Now the denominator being equal. Now let's take a look of what happens if the if the numerator is the one that is bigger. So by the rules, this should go to infinity, but uh, we can also check it out with the technique that we just learned. Uh, so limit when x goes to plus or minus infinity um, of x cubed minus 2x plus 1. Uh, the biggest power is x cubed, so I can divide by x cubed everything. And I can divide, sorry, the biggest power of the denominator is x. It's x, not x cubed. So simplifying this, um, it's going to produce x squared minus 2 plus um, 1 over x and 2 plus 4 over x, okay? So this quantity goes to 0, this quantity goes to 0, and so we're left with something that goes to infinity. Notice this x squared, when we're going plus or minus, this is still going to go to infinity, uh, and the 2 doesn't matter, it's going to get its sort on it. So in this case, it goes to infinity. So the technique is the same, divided by the biggest power of the denominator. And so let's take a look at that function, uh, that function how it looks. Notice uh, this is x cubed minus 2x 
plus 1 divided to x plus 4. Notice that um, in here when we go to infinity, it is infinity as expected. And when we go to minus infinity, it is infinity as expected as well. And uh, the behavior of the function is like this. Notice that in here where there is an issue in the denominator of minus 1 half. Uh, minus, minus 1. Yeah, minus 2, sorry. Minus 2. And minus 2, this is going to produce a 0. So that's why we have this vertical asymptote in here. Okay. And of course, we can talk about uh, the limit when we're going to uh, minus 2 by the, by the left side is going to infinity, minus 2 by the right side is going to minus infinity. So we need to discuss uh, also the behavior at the vertical asymptote. Now let's see um, one example more, and it's the example of what happened when um, there is a difference of one uh, numerator and denominator with them. So in this case, of course, we already know that this limit is going to go to infinity because the top is bigger. But uh, we can actually use long division to find out who is the equation of the line that we should use. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to do a little bit of uh, long division in here. So I'm trying to remember how long division is. So I can use x, um, and so x times x, 2x, is going to be 2x squared, so minus 2x squared over, over here, and then 2x minus 2x over here. And so this is going to cancel this out. It's going to produce 4x minus 2. Um, and so because of that, I can use 4. So 4x minus 4x. And then I'll use a 4 here by 1 is 4 minus 4. And so this produces a minus 6. So uh, what this says is that I can write 2x squared plus 6x minus 2. I can write it as a multiplication of x plus 1 uh, to x plus 4 uh, minus the residue, which is minus 6. But that also means that I can write 2x, plus, 2x squared plus 2x minus 2 divided x plus 1. I can write that as 2x plus 4 minus 6 over x plus 1. And so this one that is here is the equation of the line for this land. So um, y equals 2x plus 4 is going to be the slant asymptote. And so that means that this line is going to be this slant that's going to show up in our graph. And so let's take a look at how that that's going to be. Notice um, this is the equation of uh, the line 2x plus 4. This is the asymptote that is running between the two functions. And of course, um, this is going to infinity when we're approaching um, when we're approaching infinity. Oh, and apparently this is going to minus infinity. Uh, let me see. Yeah, it does make sense. Um, maybe it's worth taking a look to that. So in infinity, it was infinity, but if you calculate limit when x goes to minus infinity. Notice that we can uh, do the biggest part of the denominator and that's going to give me 2x plus 6 minus 2 over x, uh, 1 plus 1 over x. And so this goes to 0, this goes to 0, uh, but this goes to minus infinity and, it's, and this is going to get a source. So this goes to minus infinity. Okay. So that's pretty much an example of every single one of uh, the possibilities that can happen in, um, in limits at infinity. Okay. So let me take, um, let me clear my space. And um, now finally, this type of limits uh, sometimes can be done in functions that are, that doesn't look like uh, they're the usual for that. So, for example, in this case, we have a square root. Notice that in this case, the limit when x goes to infinity is 2. 
the limit when x goes to minus infinity is going to be minus 2. So this function is approaching um, that weird configuration. So let's see if we can um, actually prove that uh, by calculation. Since the obstacle in here is that we have a root, right? So we have limit when x goes to infinity of 10x cubed minus 3x squared plus 8 over the square root of this. And so what happens is that um, whatever we're going to use to divide on the bottom, um, the maximum power of the bottom, we also have to use it on the top. Notice that we can do that same technique here anyway. It's just we got to remember what are we using for it. So um, if we're going to use the denominator, the denominator here seems to have an x to the 6. So we want to get rid of that x to the 6. So we use 25 x to the 6 over x to the 6 uh, plus x to the 4 over x to the 6 plus 2 over x to the 6. But now we got to remember that we're not really doing x to the 6, but a square root of x to the 6. And since this is square root of x to the 6, this is just x to the 3. So in reality, we're dividing by x to the 3. Okay, so when we have roots and that kind of thing, we just got to be careful that uh, we're being consistent bottom and top with what we use to divide. So bottom we divide by really uh, x to the 6, but if we think about it, what we're really doing is dividing by square root of x to the 6. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, if it doesn't, please uh, shoot me a question and I might be able to explain it in more detail. So what it does is it produces exactly the same effect uh, that we're used to produce. And remember this square root is a continuous function, so the limit is going to go inside. And thanks to that, this is going to go to zero, this is going to go to zero, this goes to zero, this goes to zero. And so overall, notice that this is like they have the equivalent uh, the equivalent um, degree. The square root of 6 is 3, and here we have a 3, so it's actually producing just the ratio between the coefficients. 10 over the square root of 25 which is actually 10 over 5, which is 2. Okay, And so that's in the case, of course, of the positive infinity. So we're talking about going to, um, going to minus infinity. Then um, this, these numbers are still going to 0. But since we're dividing by uh, x to the cube, that sign is still going to uh, play um, a role in there and is going to produce uh, the minus infinity when, um, when we're obtaining the root. Okay, and so that's it. Um, that's all the examples of this. Uh, this end behavior is not necessarily tied to polynomial. So we can use that same thing for exponential functions. So for example, the limit when x goes to infinity of e to the x is infinity. But if we have e to the minus x, which is 1 over e to the x, that's going to go to 0. If we use the limit when x goes to um, infinity of log of x, that's going to be infinity. But if we approach 0 by the right side of log of x, that's going to produce minus infinity. And so on. If we go to minus infinity with e to the x, that's going to be 0. If we go to minus infinity with e to the minus x, that's just going to be um, uh, infinity. And so from everything that uh, you're learning here, it's important to remember that you're using a lot of properties of the powers. So 
x to the minus 1 is 1 over x, right? And similarly, by the same token, this is true. But in the same way, e to the minus x is just 1 e to the x, right? And so um, it all depends on what's going on. If, if we're going to positive infinity, then clearly this is going to go to 0. But if we're going to minus infinity, then clearly this is going to go to infinity. Okay? So that's, that's the game of algebra that we're playing in here. Uh, hopefully you have a good grasp of your algebra to go back and... Um, and make sense of this. Now, in terms of the graph, you can see that y uh, is hap what, what is happening with the exponential. So, for example, this is the exponential here, and it clearly goes to uh, infinity when x goes to infinity, and it goes to zero when it goes to minus infinity for the exponential. For e to the minus x, the opposite occurs. When we're going to minus infinity, it grows to infinity, and when we're going to infinity, it goes to zero. Okay? This from the graphical point of view. Now, um, there are certain functions that are not going to have um, a limit when uh, we're going to infinity. Functions like the cosine and the sine do not have a limit when x goes to infinity because they continue oscillating. They continue oscillating no matter what. So they're going they're always going to be between minus one and one, but they don't have a fixed number that they're approaching. They always jump between negative and positive numbers close to one, but never approach a given number, which is the definition of a limit.